what's up? I'm Liz, the Split State DIY, and today we're going to be talking about this uh, 3D model that I remixed from two existing models on Thingiverse. For those that are not super into Game of Thrones, uh, this is a house sigil for House Targaryen. Uh, Targaryen house, uh, their thing is, it's all about dragons and uh, upsetting things. Actually, there really isn't a single house in Game of Thrones that isn't a little bit upsetting. The entire series is a little bit upsetting, but I, I really love it. House Targaryen, their house motto is fire and blood, and it's a three-headed dragon. That's like their sigil when they go into battle and yada yada. Uh, so there was a model already on Thingiverse uh, with this shield, the fire and blood, and then uh, basically an SVG uh, file of the um, house sigil flat on here. Designer also has other house sigils for Game of Thrones. Uh, they have Stark, which personally my my favorite house, uh, and a few others, and same thing with the flat um, image on it, like actually how probably it would be depicted in the show. One person though remixed uh, the Stark house shield and put a low poly wolf uh, coming out of it, uh, and I actually printed that a while ago, and I really liked it. It looked really cool, um, and I thought it'd be cool to do it with the other, like, shields for the other houses, so I've been thinking about this for a while, and I thought I would try it out with Targaryen first, just because it's three dragon heads. How cool is that? Uh, so, obviously, I can't, I can't model a, a dragon head from scratch, uh, so this is actually... Um, a remixed dragon head from a dragon model called the Ice Dragon on Thingiverse. I'll link down in the description below as well as like the original um, models for the shield. And basically I used Mesh Mixer to do this whole thing. Uh, so anyone can do this. If you have like an idea and you, if you are modeling challenged such as I, uh, where you can't do these crazy um, detailed um, artistic uh, models, uh, then there, there is hope for you. You can still do unique designs uh, with just a little bit of help from Mesh Mixer, which is a free program. Uh, so let's talk a bit about how I did it. First, I took the Ice Dragon model into Mesh Mixer and I did a cut so that I just had the head um, and a little bit of the neck, uh, So, which sounds gruesome. Uh, so. And basically I kind of trimmed it up until I had exactly what I needed. And then I took that head and since it was kind of tilted off to the side, this is actually the original, this would be the original head um, in Mesh Mixer. Uh, and I, I made a mirror image so that I had another one over here. And then I uh, made an additional copy, not a mirror image, um, so that I could have one in the center, extended out the neck um, and put it so that it was facing straight on in the center here. So once I had those three dragons, um, I then like, I knew I didn't want to print like the ice dragon in like its full detail uh, because it is a really detailed model. So I wanted to make it kind of low poly to kind of mimic um, the wolf uh, that is in the remix of the Stark shield. Uh, now, as you can tell by seeing the final print, like obviously like we didn't quite achieve a low, a full low poly um, design uh, because I found when I was doing the low poly, just because of the nature of the model, I was losing some detail that I really wanted to have. I really wanted to have like the full teeth and I wanted to make sure I had the, the angles of the dragon and it's kind of, kind of looking a little bit bland when I was doing the low poly. So I kind of, I brought it to a point where it was kind of, it was definitely a lower um, polygon count than I started, but it definitely isn't like you wouldn't look at this and go like, oh yes, a low poly dragon, how nice. And now because when I brought it down to low poly, I did lose teeth on the dragons, I actually then did a little bit of dental work uh, <laughs> and uh, where I basically took, it was basically this side of the dragon here where the teeth kind of stayed intact. So I, what I did was I selected the shells for that area separated them from the model, and then was doing duplications and mirror images of them 
uh, so that I could get them into the different parts of the three dragons' mouths. And I was also angling them in different ways and kind of like resizing them so that they'd also look a little bit unique so that each dragon's mouth is just a little bit different with the teeth. Uh, some, like, they're a little bit closer together. Some, it's a little bit more sparse. They'll go further back. They'll stop a little shorter. So that was a way to kind of also get it to look a little bit more organic, which is nice because no, no Targaryen dragon is the same. They're all very unique. Uh, and then another way that I wanted to make the dragons unique uh, was with the spikes on the head because the original Ice Dragon model doesn't have that many spikes. It kind of just has the one. Um, but because you're getting the full dragon effect, like it, it doesn't look that sparse. Whereas just by itself, and especially after the low poly effect was put on, they looked a little bit um, skinny. Uh, and I, wa I wanted them to look, look fierce. And if you see the Targaryen dragons, they have like crazy spikes everywhere, all over them. And uh, obviously I wasn't going to be able to do that. But what I did was I was able to, similar to what I did with the teeth, I made copies of the spikes and started placing them in different sizes and different angles around the heads of the dragons. And I specifically made it so that they didn't match. I wanted them to be like really unique. And so we get these kind of like different spike effects on the, the heads of the dragon. So they all look different. And then to bring in the shield, uh, the actual shield model is like you can do it so that you have a color change. And obviously that's what I've done here. Uh, but you can also do a uh, multicolor print if you want to. And so the designer has um, split all those files out. So I actually brought in the individual shield file, the individual border file for the shield, and then the individual text file. And then brought those in and then kind of like made sure the dragons were connected to the shield and then exported it. Now that all sounds really simple, uh, and for the most part it was, but bringing it into Slicer, uh, which is the Slicer that I use, um, or Slick 3R, depending on who you talk to, um, I ran into some issues. When I first brought in the, brought in the model um, and sliced it and looked at the preview, uh, first of all, this wasn't sitting on like the build plate. It was saying it was on like layer 8, so it wouldn't actually start printing the first layer until layer eight, which is uh, very exciting. Uh, so I had to fix that. Um, that took a bit. I actually ended up having to like reslice some stuff and bring the shield back in and everything a couple times. And after I fixed that, I was really excited and I just hit print. And this was my first print because um, this is actually the original size of the shield. This is scaled up for the final print. Um, and as you can see, the dragons, they don't have their uh, they're spikes. They only have like the one. And I really didn't notice that until the print finished. And even like I was taking the supports off because of course this needs supports, which we'll discuss in a moment. Uh, and I was really confused. I went back to Slicer and sure enough, the, the spikes hadn't come in and not all the teeth had come in either. So like these two guys, they don't have any teeth on the, the, the right sides of their lower jaw. Uh, so I was looking really closely at it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I went back into me Mesh Mixer, zoomed in really close, and realized that the shells were actually not totally connected on the spike portions and the teeth portions. Because even if you combine everything in Mesh Mixer, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily connected and even like doing the closed cracks and stuff. So you really kind of got to get into the, the nitty gritty of it. And so what I was doing was I was highlighting the spikes and also the teeth and doing an extrude so that it would come down, I like how I'm doing it on my own jaw. That's really freaky, actually. I would do an extrude so that it was definitely connecting and then everything was coming, coming in solid. So I kept doing exports to see if it was working and it was slowly but surely, like I was getting all the spikes to show up and all the teeth to show up and the shield was staying intact and everything. So finally, got it all together. Uh, now the other thing with this first print, uh, you'll notice this, this poor little head had a little bit of a, a problem. And it wasn't because of the prints, it was because of removing the supports. Uh, so obviously this model needs supports, which is less than ideal. I, I actually don't have to use supports that often because people are uh, amazing model makers and like you don't need the supports and printers are better now. But this one obviously does because you're going to be printing in midair for the dragon effect. For this one, I used honeycomb supports because I thought maybe that would make it so that I would get less supports, but I always forget with the honeycomb supports, they can sometimes be a little bit more uh, intense than uh, the others. Uh, so 
getting these supports out was pretty rough. Also, because it's smaller, like, you have a smaller gap between, like, the head and the shield. So uh, getting, like, my removal tools in there was kind of rough, too, because, uh, and this is not ideal, but, like, I, I basically use, like, these to remove supports, and then I, I have this little, like, kind of thing to kind of separate it from the bottom. And, like, it, it works for the most part, but, like, something more delicate you'd want, um, like this, you'd probably want some more like refined tools. Um, so when I printed this one and all the heads are completely intact, which is nice, uh, I actually use rectangular supports. Uh, and those I find are a little bit more kind of wafery. And I'll, I do the detachable uh, kind where it's like a 0.2 uh, connection so that they kind of lift right off. And that basically happens here. I was able to get everything off with basically no issues except for one issue and specifically because of just how it printed. You can see I have like ever so slightly some lifting on the back here. It really didn't affect the print that much. The border is a little bit um, meh up here because of it. Uh, but the other thing that happened was the supports that were here for the back spikes. Um, because it was lifting, it didn't like kind of print with the detachableness. It kind of like bonded a little bit more. Uh, so there were some slight pieces of support that I wasn't able to get off. But you, you'll notice you can't see any red there. And that's because I just, um, you know, I just used a little, <laughs> this probably isn't the best method, but I just used a Sharpie and kind of scribbled over. I tested on the back first to make sure it wasn't gonna like stick out, but it seems to be the same shade black as this filament. So I just used Sharpie and scribbled over it and it's fine now. At least for me. I mean, maybe you're more of a perfectionist and you, you won't do that. But that slight issue, I didn't see the need to reprint because the other thing is, because uh, I scaled it up to 145% and there's a lot going on with the dragon heads and the supports, this this is a 15 and a half hour print. Very long. Yes. So, because I had a little bit of lifting in the back, uh, no, no, it's fine. It, it's fine. This model would definitely be a good candidate for soluble supports, 100%. And if you only had dual extrusion on your printer, like if you had a Sigma or an Ultimaker, you could still do this with the soluble supports and like throw in a color change um, at the layer height, and then you'd, you'd still be able to do that. Uh, theoretically, you should be able to do that, at least. I don't have the machine to do that, but yeah. This is definitely also a model that could benefit from custom supports if you have Simplify 3D. I think Cura is also starting to kind of introduce a little bit more options for that kind of thing. But overall, I'm really pleased with how this came out uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, first of all, the experience with Mesh Mixer and remixing the two models, um, kind of seeing that come together was really cool. Uh, and then I, I just couldn't be more pleased with how it printed. Like, I, I, I couldn't ask for more. <laughs> Uh, I was so scared the whole time it was printing because like 15 and a half hours, that's a, that's a big time commitment and, uh, and filament commitment, uh, but I couldn't be more, uh, more pleased with how it all came out. Uh, and I, I do have plans to do the other Game of Thrones houses. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, I think like Baratheon with like a giant deer coming off and Lannister with the lion head and I mean so on and so forth. I think it'd be really cool uh, to do that. Uh, so and then you know just have them casually on your wall. It wouldn't intimidate your house guests at all. Or maybe it would and then you'd get less house guests which would also be nice. But that's gonna do it for this video. Um, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. I'm going to have this model up on Thingiverse, so if you wanna try printing it, you totally can. Uh, I'm gonna link a bunch of stuff down in the description, the original models that I remixed from, the Ice Dragon, and also the um, Targaryen Shield as well. Uh, definitely check uh, those designers out. And don't be afraid to mess around with Mesh Mixer, uh, which is very hard to say, but fairly easy to get into. Uh, which is pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this. And until next time, fire and blood. Too far? I. Fire and blood. Rawr. Winter is coming. Uh, Lannister always repays their debts. You know nothing, Jon Snow.